If you've been watching a lot recently, then hopefully you'll be invested in the debunking of the Flat Earth documentary Scamtarctica. So far we've dissected over 45 minutes across four episodes, but we are still not even halfway through yet. This is still debunking a Flat Earth documentary. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, let's get on with debunking this terrible documentary, shall we? If you've not seen any of the first four episodes yet, then the links for those are in the description. Please do check those out first before you watch this one. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do to make sure you don't miss any more of the episodes. So, if you remember, in episode 4, they were making all sorts of mistakes regarding two Antarctic stations, Davis Station and Zhongshen Station. We continue on this vein as they make even more mistakes. Let's rejoin them, shall we? You can see a six minute difference between their solar noons, meaning what time the sun is closest to you that day. They are 67 miles apart from each other. Remember, the sun is allegedly traveling overhead due to Earth rotation at 6.26 miles per minute. The sun should take 10.7 minutes to travel between them, not 6. The key factor here is longitude difference, not surface distance difference. If those two bases are, say, 1.5 degrees apart in longitude, then their solar noons will differ by, guess what, 6 minutes. Because, of course, Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour, or one degree every four minutes. So let's check on that, shall we? Davis Station is at 77.9 degrees east, and Zhongshen is at 76.4 degrees east. Ah, exactly 1.5 degrees. What a surprise. Once again, the narrator has mixed up rotational surface speed in miles per hour with the apparent motion of the sun across the sky. These are, of course, completely different things. But hell, Let's tack on the five minutes latitude triangulation and throw them a bone. Because solar noon is the dead middle of when you see the sun rise versus set, give or take 10 to 15 minutes, depending on where you are and what time of year. So you cannot have your solar noon six minutes apart from each other if your day length is off by one hour and 23 minutes. Your solar noon should be off by that half. 41 and a half minutes. Six minutes is impossible. Well, no, it's not because solar noon, the time where the sun is the highest in the sky, is controlled by longitude. It doesn't care what your sunrise or sunset times are. You can have two places with identical solar noon times, but totally different daylight lengths, simply because one may be closer to a pole than another one. The length of the day, so how many hours the sun is above the horizon, is controlled by your distance from the equator and the tilt of Earth. That's why summer in Scotland has longer days than summer in Spain, even if solar noon is at roughly the same time. Their sunrise time is off by a margin of 35 minutes from each other, and their sunset time is off by 48 minutes. They are both only 67 miles apart from each other on nearly the same east-west latitude circle and longitude the sun would pass along at 6.26 miles per minute. Their sunrises and their sunsets have to be within 10.7 minutes of each other. If we base it off your shoddy maths and misunderstanding of physics, which of course we don't. Or we don't live on a globe. I'd even give them an extra five minutes for latitude and make it 15.7 minutes, but it can't be 35 minutes or 48 minutes. That again is impossible. As we've said in previous episodes, sunrise and sunset times are overwhelmingly influenced by latitude. Even tiny shifts north or south can massively change how long the sun is above the horizon. So even though these bases are relatively close together in distance, they are not close together in solar behavior because the curve of the Earth and the tilt of the axis means the sun interacts with each location's horizon differently. Again, they are not on the exact same latitude. I've now got the bases orientated with north up at 6.26 miles per minute. In 35 minutes, the orange line, the sun would have already traveled way past Davis base, 
219.1 miles across the shared east-west latitude line. And in 48 minutes, the sun would have already traveled 300.48 miles past Davis, not 67 miles. Once again, the 6.26 miles per minute number is completely irrelevant. That's how fast the surface is moving relative to Earth's axis. Not how fast the sun is traveling across the sky as we observe it. That, as we have already stated, is 15 degrees per hour. For the sun to take 48 minutes to travel across the 67 miles between the two bases at that latitude, the Earth would have to almost stop spinning down to 1.39 miles per minute from 376 miles per hour down to 83.7 miles per hour. Everyone would be dead. Yes, your misunderstanding of how anything works when it comes to the physics of Earth science is quite simply astounding. Yes, yeah, Steve, but that's just the same website. How does Zongshan compare to timeanddate.com's November 18th times for Davis Space? Good question. I love astute minds, so let's see together. He basically says the same thing here over and over, which we've already debunked. And his misunderstandings are now tiring, to be honest. He does move on, though, to talk a bit about the final experiment itself. My opinion is that he and Austin are not shills, but they did not fake anything and really saw what they believed to be a 24-hour sun in Union Glacier. As Nicole Murphy and I exhaustively covered for three hours in the same talk, I have been hinting and urging you to go watch. Our opinion is that they really could have seen what would appear to be a 24-hour sun in Union Glacier at a purposely chosen time of year and position on the ice wall on the real metaphysical flat Earth. Oh dear. So they accept that the final experiment saw the 24-hour sun, but now they've constructed a metaphysical flat Earth to try and explain it. The mind boggles, doesn't it? Quite different from the current accepted, but incorrect, Jesuit, Newtonian physics-based flat Earth model, incorrectly depicting the misunderstood luminary paths above our head. So you disagree then with pretty much all other flat Earthers? Interesting. Maybe we need to have a look at this metaphysical model. My buddy Dave Weiss and Marty Leeds have good evidence and reason to believe the 24-hour sun they all saw was modern holographic technological fakery. They've got no evidence at all. I've seen it. They were just spitballing. And Austin and Jaron were just unwitting dupes. Both opinions are just our opinions, speculation and conjecture. In other words, you've got no proof, and neither does David Weiss or Marty Leeds. But what I'm showing you in this film is that the official data I'm presenting here is solid proof that this map and model is too impossible to be actual reality. I'm sorry to disappoint you, my friend, but all it is proof of is your misunderstanding of physics and sunrises and sunsets and day lengths and solar noon and pretty much data in general. Your expectations are not correct. That's the real issue here. Or at least just one of the 46 bases in the alleged 24-hour sun zone would match up with at least itself and or another one at least once but none of them do, ever. Which we've discussed at length in episodes one and two. We need to look at and understand solar noon versus clock noon together to understand how damning this evidence is. We'll go to Miami on the southern tip of Florida on the June 21st summer solstice, since it's close to the Tropic of Cancer, where the sun is circling around on June 21st, on both the globe and flat earth map. There's the Tropic of Cancer cutting right under Miami. Solar noon just means as the sun comes around the latitude ring that day, in this case on the Tropic of Cancer on June 21st, what time is it on the clock when the sun is at its closest point to you, the observer in Miami? Yes, well, you could have just said that solar noon is the time of day where the sun reaches its highest point in the sky at any given location. The viewers would have actually understood that. 
Here on the flat earth map, the Tropic of Cancer is the little green ring inside the larger blue and red rings. So it's the same. As the sun comes around the Tropic of Cancer latitude ring on June 21st, what time is it on the clock when the sun is closest to you before going farther away from you? So now you go back to the 24 hour map that is impossible due to the fact that the final experiment saw the 24 hour sun in Antarctica, which you yourself admitted was seen. That seems a bit weird. It has nothing to do with what time your clock says it is when the sun is closest to you that day. So for example, we can see Marco Island is roughly 91 miles slightly northwest of Miami, maybe 70 miles if we start at West Miami, but whatever. So the sun always rises in the east and will obviously reach Miami slightly before it reaches Marco Island. So we can see from Miami, their solar noon on the June 21st solstice, or just the time on the clock the sun is closest to Miami before going away from Miami, is 1.22 in the afternoon, an hour and 22 minutes after their clock said it was clock noon. This is, of course, a well-understood concept. Interesting to see where he's going to go with this. While for Marco Island, 91 miles west of Miami that same day, their solar noon point, where the sun is closest to Marco Island before it starts going away from Marco Island, is 1.28 in the afternoon on the clock, six minutes later than Miami's solar noon. Six minutes, nice. So with a rotational rate of 15 degrees per hour, that means these two places should be around 1.5 degrees apart in longitude. I checked, and they are. What a surprise. That's simply because it took the sun six more minutes to get from Miami to Marco Island on its east to west path during the day. There are some times in your life where you can be extremely chuffed with yourself. And this is one of those times because I've managed to catch something here where they have actually monumentally debunked themselves. Earlier on in the documentary, they told us that two bases in Antarctica were 67 miles apart and had a six minute solar noon difference. And they said that this was impossible on the globe because the ground speed there is only 6.26 miles per minute. They were thinking the time difference should be more like 10 or 11 minutes based on how long the surface takes to rotate that distance. But then just then, they show us Miami and Marco Island, around 90 miles apart. And surprise, surprise, there's also a six minute difference between their solar noon times. And here's the thing, the rotational ground speed in Miami is double that of Antarctica. So by their logic, how can both places with totally different surface speeds, remember, have the same six minute difference in solar noon? The answer is of course simple because it's got nothing to do with ground speed in miles per hour. It's entirely about longitude and Earth's rotation. As we've said, the Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour, which is around one degree per four minutes. That's true whether you're standing at the equator in Miami or Antarctica. And if you actually look at the maps, the longitude difference between the two bases in Antarctica that he was talking about earlier in the documentary and Miami and Marco Island is pretty much 1.5 degrees in longitude. That's why the solar noon times differ by six minutes in both cases. That is exactly how the globe works. Perfect and predictable. Wow, that is one of the most satisfying cell phones we've ever had on this channel. Quite splendid indeed. And a lovely place to finish this episode, I think. Please let me know in the comments whether or not you enjoyed this episode or if you're enjoying the series in general and of course how satisfying that self debunk was at the end there. As I say of course we're all done and dusted for another episode. Thanks so much for watching today. As ever it's appreciated. If you enjoyed it please do consider subscribing to the channel. Like I said at the beginning you don't want to miss another one of these episodes. Hitting the bell notification too would be great. And if you really enjoyed this one, a big thumbs up would be fantastic too. Thank you. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow for six things that us globe earthers should never do. See you then. <laughs>